السلام علیکم گائز واٹس اپ کیا چل رہا ہے اچھا میری بات سنو لسن دس از گون بی پارٹ ٹو آف دیٹ پریکٹس سیشن فار اے ٹو فزکس نائن سیون زیرو ٹو پی فور اوکے سو وی آر گون بی ڈیلنگ ود کوشچنز دیٹ آر ریلیٹڈ ٹو ہیٹ کیپیسٹی اور کیا ہوتا تھا اس کو کیا بولتے تھے Oh, ideal gases. Yes, yes. We are going to be dealing with ideal gases and, and also the heat, heat related question and also the first law of thermodynamics. Anyways, let's just begin without wasting much time. Let's just begin. Okay. So the first question state, what is meant by internal energy of a system? Okay. I'm just going to be writing this answer down. And uh, for this, I'm going to just write the answer and then I'm going to be uh, sharing the details with you. Okay, guys, I just want you to read this. I've just written it. It is the sum of all the random distribution of kinetic energies and potential energies of all the molecules in a system. That does it. Okay, I would want you in the examination that you write the full form, not just KE. Anyways, let's move, let's move on to the next part. By reference, <laughs> I'm so sorry. By reference to the intermolecular forces, explain why the change in internal energy of an ideal gas is equal to the change in total kinetic energy of its molecules. Okay, there are no intermolecules in an ideal gas. I'm just going to be writing this down. In an ideal gas, there are, oh my God, in an ideal gas, there are no intermolecular forces. Intermolecular. Kular inter oh my god what have I written inter molecular forces in an ideal case there are no intermolecular forces uh so no so there are no kinetic energies so there are no potential energies so there are no potential energies so internal energy is dependent so internal energy internal energy is entirely dependent on is dependent on dependent on uh, kinetic energies kinetic energies okay that does it anyways let's just move on to the next part state and explain the change if any in the internal energy of a solid metal ball as it falls under gravity in a vacuum hmm. so we have the vacuum over here so some a ball is actually falling in a vacuum okay if, if it is actually falling in a vacuum that means there are no frictional forces uh, and all the gp is being converted into kinetic energy overall kinetic energy not the internal kinetic energy we are not dealing with that so the thing is uh, if there is so if there is no frictional forces there is no heat generated if there is no heat generated that means uh, the internal kinetic energy of all the molecules inside the uh, solid metal ball won't increase so that means Only externally, the kinetic energy is definitely increasing, but internally it is not. So if the kinetic energy is not increasing, so there won't be any change in the internal energy. So that means the internal energy is, is going to be unchanged. Anyways, I'm going to be writing this down. If any, there is no change. There is no change. There is no change in... and internal energy this is my statement there are the reasons now i'm going to be quoting the reasons if any in the internal uh no uh, all gp you know what uh, but what should i be writing no let me just rephrase this sentence it's going to be there is no change in internal energy the reason being that there is no frictional forces there are no frictional forces there are no frictional 
forces on the metal ball so uh internal so the more so molecular kinetic energies so molecular kinetic energies i'm just going to be writing the full form kinetic energies will not change so okay so that is it that is the reason i've already stated the statement over here this is the statement and these are the explanations okay i guess this is done let's just move on to the next part okay the first law of thermodynamics may be expressed as uh, you can see that where delta u is the increase in internal energy of a system state the meaning of plus q it is the uh, heat energy energy supplied heat energy supplied to a system okay this is important heat energy supplied to a system so i'm just going to be writing down input anyways wq means work done work done uh, by the system by the system work done by the system actually no work done on the system because it is plus plus w so work done on the system this is also input so i'm just going to be writing this down input that does it okay so let's just move on to the next part oh my god we have a graph over here that we have to deal with so I'm just going to be zooming out a bit. The variation with pressure P of the volume V of a fixed mass of an ideal gas is shown in figure 2.1. We can see that this is a cycle and uh, we have the pressure on the horizontal axis and the volume change on the vertical axis. So we start off with from A. We, we are starting off from A. We go all the way to B and then we go to C and then we come back. So therefore, there is no change in internal energy. That is a fact. Uh, but uh, we need to just verify everything. Okay, so first of all, I'm go going to be, you know, examining this graph in detail. First of all, A to B, there is no, there is a definite change in volume at constant pressure. So that means work is being done. And uh, we can also see that from A to B, the volume is increasing. If the volume is increasing, so that means the gas itself is actually doing work. We are dealing with ideal gas over here. So the gas is actually doing work uh, and it is going to be pushing the atmosphere away. So that means this is going to be subtracted overall. So that means that work done is going to be taken as negative. Anyways, after that, we can clearly see that once again, we are falling back to C point and we can see that the volume is again uh, uh, decreasing. The volume is decreasing. That means external work is done. And uh, we gain some of the energy back. And after that, from C to A, again, there is an input of energy. So we, we just come back to where we started. Okay. So let's just read the questions and deal with the uh, deal with whatever that is being thrown to uh, thrown towards us. I guess undergoes a cycle of changes A to B to C to A. Okay. During the change A to B, the volume of the gas increases from this to this. We have already verified this statement. Show that the magnitude of the work done during the change A to B is 390. So we need to find this work done. So this is going to be simple. Work done must be equal to P delta V, where P is the constant pressure and delta V is the change in volume. So I'm just going to be scrolling back all the way up and I'm going to be dealing with this. So first of all, let me just take out the values. The pressure is actually 2.6 into 10 to the power 5. So 2.6. Oh my god this is going to be 2.6 into 10 to the power 5 multiplied by the change in volume the change in volume is actually going to be we just look at this thing very carefully i need to zoom in a little bit um okay so i'm going to scroll 
towards the left hand side and see read this value if this is 3.6 this is going to be 3.8 right 3.8 and 4 that is correct 3.8 so this is going to be 3.8 and uh, what about this value over here so i'm going to be zooming in even more to read this part so let me just uh i'll just scroll over here using this part and we can see that this is somewhere over here so this is going to be let me just read this 2.2 and uh, this is going to be this dead center so this is going to be 2.3 okay so we have both the values over here so this is going to be 2.3 i'm just going to be writing it down two when i got so let's just make it thinner so this is going to be 2.3 and uh, let's just zoom out and move all the way back up and that is 3.8 so we are just going to be writing it down 3.8 anyways so this is done and 3.8 and actually this is going to be 3.8 and 2.3 3.8 and 2.3 so i'm just scrolling back all the way down and i'm going to be zooming out again so this is going to be 3.8 minus um i forgot it <laughs> i just have to scroll back again so let me just directly use the, the, that is 2.3 okay so that is 2.3 and then we are going to multiply this by a factor of uh, 10 raised to the power minus 3. So this is going to be 10 raised to the power minus 3. That is done. So I'm just going to be using a calculator to calculate this thing. Just give me a minute so that I can arrange my calculator. Okay, guys. So I have done the calculation and I'm getting exactly 390 Jews. So that is it. This is done. This was the easy part. State and explain the total change, if any, in the internal energy of a gas during. Let's just make it even bigger. State and explain the total change, if any, in the internal energy of a gas during one complete cycle. State and explain the total change, if any, in the internal energy of a gas during one complete cycle. No, there is no change. So I'm just going to be writing this down. No change. No change. In internal energy I can also give some details but uh, let's just uh, let me just construct the rest of the answer and explain the total change if any internet during one complete cy cycle uh, so uh, from A to B we had uh, uh, the gas actually uh, because it was expanding so that means uh, work was being done by the gas and then the same work done or same energy was actually retrieved so i can write this write this down in fact uh no change in internal energy all work done by gas from a to b by gas from a to b is retrieved when when going from b to c and back to a okay so that does it Anyways, this is another question. During the change A to B, 1370 of thermal energy is transferred to the gas. Okay, so th this is another statement that we have. This is the energy that is transferred to the gas. So it means we this is going to be positive. So 1370 positive. And then the work done, we already have the work done. This was the, actually done by the by the gas itself. So this, this is going to be minus because this was work done by the gas so this is going to be minus 390 and the change in internal energy from a to b is going to be plus 1370 minus 390 and that should be 980 so this is going to be 980 joules and then from b to c uh, okay they have already stated something over here during the change b to c no thermal energy enters or leaves the gas Okay, so that means no change over here. The work done on the gas during this change is 550. 
This time, work is being done on the gas. So this is going to be positive. So 550. And uh, this is actually zero. And uh, therefore, the internal energy actually is going to be 550. I'm just going to be writing it down, 550. So this is again a positive change, positive change. And finally, C2A. C2A. C2A is important because uh, uh, there is no work done during C2A. Uh, if we just look, go back and look over here, C2A, there is no work done. The reason being uh, that the uh, it is completely horizontal. That means uh, there is no change in volume, so no work could be done. So that means all the only uh, something has happened with the heat exchangers. So we are going to be dealing with that. Since we know at the end, delta U should be zero. So let me just first of all find the total delta U up till C point. That is going to be 980 plus 550 and uh, 1530. 1530 is a value that we, we got when moving from A to C. And that was something that was actually given to the gas. So now this needs to be retrieved back, right? So it loses this amount. And this is going to be uh, minus 1530. This is going to be minus 1530. And eventually the change in internal energy is going to be minus 1530. So that makes everything. Uh, so at this position, A to B, B to C, and C to A, the overall change is zero. So this is done. This question is done. Let's just move on to the next question. So this makes sense. This question is done. Let's just move on. Okay, guys, let's just move on to the next question. So this is a question that we are going to be solving right now. State what is meant by the internal energy of a system. We have already dealt with in the above questions, in the previous questions. So I'm not going to be doing this. And uh, let's just go and read this question. The atoms of an ideal gas occupy a container of volume. Okay, this is given in meters at a pressure of this and a temperature of 180 Kelvin as illustrated in figure 2.1. Okay, so let's just look at this diagram. We can see something has happened. Um, there is a definite increase in volume over here. We can see that increase in V. Uh, okay, so the pressure remains unchanged. So that means we we can use P delta V over here. And uh, something has happened to the temperature. And yes, we have additional input of energy uh, at this point over here. So there you go. Let's just read the question and see what we can do. The gas is heated at constant pressure so that its volume becomes this. Okay, this has already been uh, at a temperature of this. For a fixed mass of a gas, calculate the amount of substance in mole. This is very easy. So the moles won't change because we are simply providing energy to it. So moles in both the cases would remain same. So I'm just going to be using the first part to calculate the amount of substance. And for that part, I'm just going to be zooming out a bit so that I can copy the values and work it, work this out. So this is going to be simple. So this is going to be PV is equal to nRT. I'm just going to be using this directly. The pressure is actually 2.6 into 10 raised to power 5 multiplied by the volume that is given to us is actually 2.30 into 10 raised to power minus 3 bracket close and n is our target multiplied by the molar gas constant which is actually 8.31 multiplied by the thermodynamic temperature, which is 180 Kelvin. Remember this thing, this needs to be in Kelvin and it is already in Kelvin. So we can easily find the number of more moles over here. So let's see. Um, let me just pause it for a minute so that I can just calculate this thing. And without waste. So yeah, guys, I have just uh, done this calculation and I'm getting a value of 0 0.4. Let me just scroll down a little bit. So I'm getting a value of 0 0.4 over here. So this does it. Let's just move on uh, to the next part, which is the temperature in Kelvin. Okay. Uh, for this part, the temperature T in Kelvin. So we need to find the unknown temperature T. The number of moles remain unchanged. So we can simply write this down. We can write an equation over here. PV is equal to NRT. 
and uh, that is simply going to be PV over RT is equal to 0.4. Well, I'm just going to be using the calculator values over here. So that does it. So we can easily find T over here. So the pressure remains unchanged. I'm just going to be copying the pressure over here, which is actually 2.6 into 10 to the power 5. Uh, multiplied by the new volume, I have to scroll all the way up. So 3.8 into 10 to the power minus 3. So this is actually 3.8 into 10 to the power minus 3. And uh, this is then divided by 8.31, multiplied by the thermodynamic temperature. That is our main target. And then this is going to be, uh, I'm just going to be using the calculator version, but I'm just going to be writing down 0 0.4. So let me just do this calculation directly. So that means uh, I'm just going to sim simply multiply this by 8.31. And uh, let's just do it directly. 2.6 into 10 to power. 5 multiplied by 3.8 into 10 raised to power minus 3 and then divided by the answer making sure t is the subject so this gives me a value of rounding it off to three significant figure 297 297 kelvin so this is the value that i'm getting okay so this okay. is done let's just move on to the next part during the change in B, the thermal energy supplied to the gas is 980 joules. During the change, thermal energy, okay. Determine the work done on the gas during this change. First of all, we just need to find the work done. Explain your working. So this is a three mark question. So work done is equal to pressure multiplied by change in volume. So the pressure doesn't change. The pressure remains unchanged, which is actually equal to 2.6 into 10 to the power 5. 2.6 into 10 to the power 5. But the change in volume is something that we need to deal with. And the change in volume is actually 3.8 3 minus 2.3. 3.8 minus 2.3. And this is then multiplied by 10 to the power minus 3. So that is it. This is going to be the work done. Work done on the gas during this change. Actually, this value is going to be negative as well. The reason is that uh, they have st said the work done on the gas, but apparently this is actually work done by the gas. So this value needs to be taken as negative. So 2.6 into 10 is to power 5 multiplied by 3.8 minus 2.3 bracket close multiplied by 10 is to power minus 3. So I'm getting a value of 390 over here. So work done is actually 390, 390 joules. During the thermal energy supplied to the gas is this. Determine the work done on the gas during this change. The work done remains this, 390, but we need to take this change as negative. <clears throat> work is actually done by the gas. Work is done by gas. So that, that is why I have to take this as negative. Okay? So this is going to be minus 390. Anyways, determine the change in internal energy of the gas. Okay, so internal energy is going to be delta U is going to be uh, uh, delta Q plus delta W. And uh, the, we have provided some energy to this system, which is actually heat energy. So this is going to be 980 plus the work done. Uh, the work done is going to be negative minus 390. So let's just look at the change in internal energy, and this is going to be easily 980 minus 390, and this gives me 590. So 590 joules, this is done. Okay, guys. Oh my God. So guys, let's just proceed with the last question of the day. I think this is the only question that we are going to be doing. And uh, let's just deal with it. Okay, this is another question that is actually quite similar, but let's just work it out. An ideal gas has a volume of this at a pressure of this and a temperature of this as shown, okay? 
the gas suddenly expands to a volume of this okay during the expansion no thermal energy is transferred okay no thermal energy is transferred in the previous case there was transfer but here there is no transfer the final pressure of the gas is this at a temperature of this tf as shown show that the number of gas molecules is this hmm. So, we have PV is equal to NRT, but I, I prefer using NKT over here. So, this is going to be PV is equal to NKT. So, we're going to be doing this. We're, I'm just going to be using the first one because the number of molecules won't change. Uh, show that the number of gas molecules is this. So we just need to input the values of it. So pressure is actually 8.5 into 10 raised to the power of 5 multiplied by the volume, which is actually 3.1 into 10 raised to the power of minus 3. And uh, N is our target. N is the number of molecules, not the moles. For moles, we have NRT, not NKT. So K is the Boltzmann's constant, which is going to be... Um, uh, which is a value of around 1.38. This is actually given in the data sheet. 1.38 into 10 raised to power minus 23 multiplied by the thermodynamic temperature, which is 290. So there you have it. Let me just do this calculation directly. So 8.5 into 10 raised to power 5 multiplied by 3.1 into 10 raised to power. Oh my God. Some, I just messed up the calculator. Oh my God, 10 raised to power minus three divided by brackets, 1.38 into 10 raised to power minus 23 multiplied by 290. And this gives me a very huge number, a very large number. And uh, that makes sense. 6.58 into 10 raised to power 23, since this was a prove it question. So N is roughly equal to 6.6 .6 into 10 raised to power 23, hence proved. Okay, here's all we are. Let's just move on to the next question. Show that the final temperature TF of the gas is 190. Okay, so how do we do this question? This is very simple. We have the we have the value of n over here. We can work this out again, or in fact, let's just work it out. Let's just work it out. So once again, P V over K T is actually equal to n. The n doesn't change, so we can easily find T F. I'm just going to call it F. So this is going to be P V over K N is equal to Tf. So let's just calculate this value. So the new pressure is actually given to us as 2.7 into 10 to the power 5. 2.7 into 10 to the power 5 multiplied by the volume is actually 6.3 into 10 to the power minus 3. So this is actually, oh my God, what just happened? Uh, this is what the irony of touch screens. So 2.6.3, uh, I'm just going to scroll up and down. That is much, much easier. So volume is actually 6.3 into 10 to the power minus 3. 6.3 into 10 to the power minus 3. Divided by 1.38 into 10 to the power minus 23. Multiplied by N. We, I'm just going to be using the calculator version. So 6.3. I'm just going to be writing it down over here, but I'm going to be using the calculator version. Okay. So this is going to be TF. So let's just do it. Multiply by 1.38 into 10 to the power of minus 23. And I'm just going to be, first of all, dealing with the numerator 2.7 into 10 to the power 5 multiplied by 6.3 into 10 to the power minus 3 divided by answer and this gives me a value of I'm getting a value of 187.2 which is roughly equal to two significant figure this becomes 190 Kelvin so that does it easy 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 part anyways let's just move on
the average translational kinetic energy of a molecule of an ideal gas, so they are dealing with one molecule over here, is given by this expression, okay, where T is the thermodynamic temperature and K is the Boltzmann's constant. Calculate the increase in the internal energy of the gas delta U. So, internal energy is actually dependent on the kinetic energy. So, we already have the number of molecules. We just simply multiply it and that is it. That is it. What is there to consider? Anyways, let, let, let's just read the question. For the, the change in EK is only, uh, since we are dealing with an ideal gas over here, so any change in EK is reflected on delta U over here. So therefore, delta U is actually equal to change in EK. So delta U must be equal to 3 over 2 KT. But the thing is, we need to... But there is a definite change in temperature over here. So this is going to be K delta T. And uh, more importantly, we have to find uh, the increase in internal energy. Internal energy is dependent on all the molecules. So this must be multiplied by N over here as well. So this is going to be 3 over 2 into K 1.38 into 10 to power minus 23 multiplied by change in temperature, which is going to be Let's deal with 190. This is the final temperature and initial temperature was actually 290. So this is going to be 190 minus 290. And this change is actually going to be negative. The reason is that it is actually losing this energy, internal energy. So this is going to be multiplied by N, which we already found the value, uh, which is 6.6 into 10 to the power 23. So this is going to be 6.6 into 10 to the power 23. And uh, let me just calculate this value. Just give me a minute. And uh, let's just calculate this thing. So this is going to be 3 over 2 multiplied by 1.38 multiplied by 10 to the power minus 23. Uh, I don't have the calculator values anymore. So I'm just going to work, uh, work it out directly. 190 minus 290 and multiplied by 6.6 .6 into 10 to the power 23. And uh, I'm getting a value of, let's just round it off to two significant figure. And this is going to be minus 1400 joules. Okay. So mm -hmm. up to two significant figure, I've quoted the answer. And this is actually minus 1400 joules. So this means there is a loss in internal energy. There is no increase over here. Use the first law of thermodynamics to explain why the external work done on the gas during the expansion is equal to the increase in internal energy in B2. Well, we, let's just go back. There is something that was initially said. No thermal energy is transferred during, from going from here to here. There is no transfer of thermal energy. So that means I'm just going to be writing it down. Delta U is actually dependent on plus Q plus W. Actually, I'm just going to be writing it down. Change in Q plus change in the work done. But the thing is, this change is zero. So Delta U is actually only dependent on the work done. So this means uh, and change in Q is actually zero. So, delta U is actually equal to the work done. And therefore, uh, delta U must be equal to minus 1400 joules. That does it. Okay, guys. So, that this is it for today, guys. So, I've done some questions and I hope you enjoyed it. Please practice karo, mehnat karo. This is the only way. If I'm doing it on the second day of Eid, why can't you guys do the same thing? Anyways, guys, take care. Apna bhaut bhaut